So as far as comic book superheroes go, Batman probably has the most interesting lineup of villains. They're some of the most dangerous, and demented, and dastardly villains in fiction. But one stands above the rest. One villain, so cunning, so genius, that Batman, nay, the world, would have no chance of beating them in a fair fight. And I'm talking about the Riddler. Hello there, detective. Yes, it's me, your most feared nemesis, the Riddler. Now, I get it, I get it. The Riddler is kind of seen as a joke villain these days. He was killed off almost immediately in the Telltale games. He was played by probably one of the greatest comic actors ever in his only movie appearance. <laughs> and he's the main point of criticism and frustration with the Arkham games. But I was overthinking things, as I do, and I was thinking about the Arkham video games, and the Riddler is just downright terrifying. He is super scary, and he's probably the deadliest villain in the whole series. And it's not just the games either, like, I've been doing some extra research, and yeah, like, a lot of this stuff is in the comics as well, and it's surprising. Like, holy cow, this character. So let me go ahead and explain how that is. Let's go all the way back to the first game in the series, the prequel, Arkham Origins. So first things first, the Riddler, what he does in that game is he jams all of the radio towers in Gotham City, which makes it so Batman can't access his map and he can't use the Batwing to fast travel anywhere. This essentially makes Batman's entire network completely useless. He's blind, he can't find anything in Gotham because the Riddler stopped him. The Riddler also has a bunch of data mines that are set up all over the city and they're just feeding the Riddler information and blackmail on all of the important people in Gotham. But here's the thing about that. He set all of this up and no one knew about it until he was done setting it up. Like, he, he created this vast virus network that no one noticed until the events of Arkham Origin when Batman finally got around to noticing it. And we still play him off as a joke, as a pathetic character? Like, that's crazy! That's amazing! And it's terrifying! Plus, we also have this story from uh, Scott Snyder. It was Batman number 23.2 from 2013, where the Riddler created a key card to get into Wayne Enterprises, but this key card also completely disrupted the entirety of Wayne Tower. It masked his signal, as well as uploaded a virus to Wayne's signal. I was like, I mean, and of course, in the early days of the Riddler's career, he was very analog. He used a lot of puzzles and uh, different puzzle gimmicks. But since then, he's become a huge technical genius. And it is amazing the kinds of stuff he does, even for a science fiction story like Batman. Yes, though, that event right there is amazing, but it's nothing compared to what he does in the actual first game in the series, Arkham Asylum. In Arkham Asylum, there are a lot of other collectibles in the game that are made to kind of flesh out the experience, give Batman and thus the player something else to do other than the main campaign. And as far as Arkham Asylum goes, almost the entire game is just the main campaign and it's these collectibles and these searches that are really the only real side quest in that particular game. Now at first these things they just they just kind of seem like game fluff, right? Like. It's just there for the player. You look for the different landmarks, you look for different artifacts, you uncover this thing about Amadeus Arkham, and you don't really think too hard about it, but then the Riddler, to help you out, puts out these maps. And on the maps are the locations of everything. Everything. like. He figured it all out. These maps have the locations of the landmarks, has the, all of the artifacts, the confidential uh, therapy recordings that you're looking for for all of the specific characters, has the positions of all the 
Redler trophies, and it has all the positions of the Amadeus Arkham markers. Which means that he found all of this stuff beforehand. Riddler stole everyone else's confidential medical information just for kicks. He knew what everyone else's uh, hobbies and interests were. He knows the Arkham inmates very well. And he solved the hidden history of Amadeus Arkham and of Arkham Asylum and the cult-like origins of it just for fun. And he's not looking for the credit for it. He just sets it out there for Batman to find later. What? Now, I admit that the Amadeus Arkham thing, yeah, that sounds like video game fluff. It sounds like, you know, they just needed to fluff out the game. But, in 1990, there was a story release called Batman Dark Knight Dark City. He uncovers like a 200 year old cult that the entire city of Gotham was built on top of. So, yeah, he does this kind of thing in the comics. This is not out of character for him to just happened to stumble upon all of these secrets and mysteries from years ago, centuries ago even, that nobody wants to hear about. And that's not all. Remember, by the time you meet the Riddler, canonically speaking, it's been maybe half an hour since Joker has taken over the asylum. But Riddler's not even on the island. He set all of this up before Joker overthrew the asylum. Which means that he knew exactly what Joker's plan was going to be. He knew exactly where all of the villains were so he could put corresponding items next to them. He knew everything from the beginning. And Batman didn't talk to him. Batman should have seen this. It's like, oh wait, the Riddler knows literally everything. I should talk to him. But no! And this just gets more frustrating when we get into Arkham City, arguably the best game of the series. Arkham City starts with Hugo Strange being all, Protocol 10 will commence in 10 and a half minutes hours. And then Batman's all, Protocol 10, I don't know what this is, but I bet the Joker does. Why the Joker? Because like, the Joker's a lone wolf. He's not involved in anything. He's involved in like this gang war with everyone else if that's the case. But... Then consider this. Consider what the Riddler does in this game. Consider instead the placement of the Riddler trophies and the riddles that you have to find in that game. Things that were set up beforehand by the Riddler. Now, you know that the Riddler has a big hand in everything that's going on because he makes himself known. He puts question marks all over the place. He puts puzzles all over the place. It's easy to tell when he's been some player. And he's obviously been there before you go visit the Joker near the beginning of the game, because you can see all of his stuff all everywhere. He somehow got Riddler trophies into Strange's Tower, past the League of Shadows, into everyone else's base, and has intricate riddles throughout the entire story. This implies that the Riddler figured out the entire plot of Arkham City before Arkham City happened. Now, I know that there's some dialogue amongst the bugs in the game saying, hey, I set up a couple of Riddler trophies here, and I got paid, and it was good. And so you could argue that a lot of the work is done by the grunts, but I can't believe that the grunts would set up riddles and physical challenges this intricate and this specific, you know? They had to be following the Riddler's instructions. It was all set up by the Riddler. But there's one group I don't think he could buy out, which is the League of Shadows. And in order to get the Riddler trophies into Wonder Tower, he had to get past the League of Shadows first. The Riddler somehow got past the League of Shadows to put Riddler trophies in ridiculous places so that you can go collect them later. What? What is this guy? And then we get into the third game in the base trilogy, Arkham Knight. And what he does there is just, it's just more. So the main things you do against the Riddler in Arkham Knight is you do the race challenges and you do his fun house of scary death traps and stuff. First of all, the Riddler bought almost the entirety of Gotham's underground legally. You look at the Gotham City stories and you can see 
information on the Riddler that he did indeed buy this legally. So, first of all, the guy just has tons of money. Probably enough money to rival Bruce Wayne and Wayne Enterprises. I don't know where it's coming from. I think he's probably that guy who sells your information online. Regardless of where it comes from, he has it. And what does he do with it? He builds stunt tracks for the Batmobile. Now, this is much more than just setting up a race course. He sets up a race course that is difficult, but you could still pass it. Now, it's easy to make an easy challenge, and it's easy to make an impossible challenge, but it's a hard thing to do to make a challenge that's hard, but just easy enough to where it's possible. So this either means that he also has a car like the Batmobile that he can test this on, or he's just really good at simulations. But then the craziest thing, the thing that puts the Riddler over at the top that makes him the deadliest Batman villain. When you go into the fun house to help Catwoman and go through the death traps there, Riddler reveals that he has something called a Batman proof robot. Batman can touch it. If Batman touches it, he gets electrocuted. And Catwoman has to fight those robots because they are Batman-proof. He made the Batman-proof robot! Riddler won! The fight is over! There's no way that Batman could literally fight him on a fair playing ground because the Riddler has a Batman-proof robot! The only reason why Riddler lost was because Catwoman was there. But that's okay because Riddler made a corresponding Catwoman-proof robot! The only thing I can think of that is a failing for the Riddler is that at the end of Arkham Knight, when, spoilers, when Batman's identity is revealed to the public, the Riddler doesn't believe that Bruce Wayne actually is Batman and thinks it's a ruse. But to be fair, this is a universe where Hush exists, and Hush also looks like Bruce Wayne. So everyone is Bruce Wayne. So I could see how the Riddler would have some doubt as to Batman's identity. The Riddler! He is Batman's most powerful villain by a long shot. So how did he lose? And the only thing I can think of is that the Riddler's goal in the entirety of the Arkham games is not to kill Batman, but it's something a lot more sweet and a lot less sinister. What is his goal? Consider Arkham Asylum. In Arkham Asylum, he's got and stole the information of all of the Arkham inmates, including Catwoman. Arkham City? He hid a few Catwoman trophies around the place, and they're in places that Batman crosses. Like, you find almost all of them as Batman, just going through the story. Which means that the Riddler probably set those up because he was expecting that Batman and Catwoman were going to cross paths. Now, we know that if you play the game, you know that Batman and Catwoman don't really cross paths significantly at that point in the game, and they don't really associate with each other very much through the game anyway. But then in Arkham Knight, he goes as far as kidnapping Catwoman and forcing Batman to do all of these challenges just to save Catwoman and just to make sure that they work together. In short, the Riddler is easily Batman's most dangerous villain. Fight is over, by a long shot, he's the most dangerous. But his goal isn't to kill Batman, his goal is get Batman and Catwoman together. There you go. Yeah, okay, I admit, that last part of the video was me being kind of a little bit silly. But at the same time, it's like, all of the f pieces do fit together, and it's like, in Arkham City, I don't understand why the Riddler would even pay attention to Catwoman otherwise. So, I don't know. I don't know, it's just a fan theory. Consider that one a fan theory. Anyway. Riddler is a super cool villain, he's sorely underutilized, he needs to make another significant appearance either in the comics or in a movie because he's just really cool and I know that he's kind of hard to write for because it requires creating puzzles that are hard for Batman to solve, but he's just super cool, he needs to make another appearance. And in the meantime, if you're looking for a great Riddler appearance, I would recommend you check out the Arkham games. They are some of the best video games from this and the previous generation's consoles. Also, as far as comic books go, you should definitely check out uh, Batman Arkham the Riddler. It collects a bunch of Riddler's best moments in his comic book history. It costs maybe, you know, 10 to 15 bucks on Comixology. 
And you should also check out Batman Dark Knight Dark City. It's a horror book and it shows the Riddler probably in his deadliest form. And it is scary, but yo, know, it's definitely uh yeah, it's definitely a harder core book, so keep that in mind if you're going to look into it. So, that's what I have for you today. Now, my question for you is, who is your favorite Batman villain? Go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. And, yeah, until next time, thank you for joining me. Have a great day, and remember to always be your best self.